Hello, everyone, um, and welcome. My name is Silas Brescia, and I work with the Cody Institute as a research intern, and I'm thrilled to welcome you all here today to the 2023 Nova Scotia Career and Employment Student Symposium. Our panel for this hour is on the theme of community-led development, and we're excited to have two panelists with us today to speak about their work in this area. After some brief, brief introductions, each panelist will have 20 minutes to present their work, and we'll end the panel off with a combined Q&A session. At the bottom of your screen, you will see a Q&A button. Please feel free to submit a question using this function at any time throughout the panel, and we will ask the question once we reach the end, or rather that part of the panel. Uh, first and foremost, um, I have a land acknowledgement here. Before we introduce our panelists, it is important for us to acknowledge that the Center for Employment and Innovation and the, and the Cody Institute operate on the ancestral and ceded territory of Mi'kma'ki, which holds a complex history of and continues to be impacted by exploitation, violence, and colonization. We acknowledge Mi'kma'ki and Maliseet people as the original caretakers of this land and recognize the failure of colonial institutions and systems to maintain the treaties of peace and friendship that were intended to guide our presence here. We also acknowledge the historical presence and contributions of African Nova Scotians and persons of African descent who, whose forced labor played a significant role in forming the, forming the foundations of this province and whose own relationship with, with land has been complicated by the impacts of slavery and colonization. The labor of refugee and, Im and immigrant groups as well has been exploited towards the same end. Race and ingenuity has been used as tools to oppress and repress various communities, communities across these lands, and the inten intentional and unintentional maintenance of others continues to be to cause harm and con contribute to the grief and trauma of historical historically excluded groups. As an organization, we take responsibility for learning and seeking long-term transformation in our relationships with land and labor in our province. All right, so on to our presentation. Um, our first presenter is Dhruv Patel. Um, Dhruv Patel gradu graduated from St. Evex with the Bachelor of Arts and Science and Health degree. Mr. Patel is working as education's programs intern at Cody Institute, where his role is to support, assist, and work with diploma development leadership participants and, fa and facilitators for eff effective delivery of the course. Um, Dhruv's uh, presentation is going to be on rethinking leadership with global, global change leaders. Now on to you, Dhruv. Thank you so much, Silas, for that amazing and warm introduction. And I'll take you all to my slides. So hopefully all of you can see my slides right now. And before I start, I also want to acknowledge for my personal self that I'm in Mi'kma'ki, the official and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people, and I'm a treaty person. So, this summer has been an amazing opportunity for me to think, rethink, learn, unlearn, learn a lot of new things for myself that I can keep for my life. And I'll take you through a journey of that. And well, you all might be expecting an extra, extravagant PowerPoint presentation, but this is going to be really a humbling and a very important thing that I learned over the summer is that. I prefer following the methods where I can express myself using flip chart, artistic tools and everything. This does not account for the fact that I'm not going to make a really good presentation. It's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. And it's going to be a journey. So <clears throat> as said earlier, the title is like Rethinking Leadership with Global Change Leaders. I kept the title very specifically because like, I went through a journey of rethinking what leadership is all about. And I worked for the Diploma in Developmental Leadership where we had global change leaders from all across the world. And like I was, I was kind of sort of baby to them. Like they were all very mature people in their field of doing amazing work globally. So with global change leaders. And one thing that I learned over the summer is that I always like to do agenda and objectives of what we're gonna go through. So you can also keep a record of how and how, how is the flow of the presentation and we can come back later about it as well. So the first thing is a day in my life fit summer 2023. 
So I had this amazing opportunity to be in the classroom, morning, eight to evening, five, working, learning, and supporting people in the various sectors. So that's going to be the first thing. The second part is thinking and rethinking leadership. So this was my journey of like how we went about things and like what was my perspective before the internship about leadership and how it how I changed my mindset. That was one thing. Third thing is road to rethinking leadership. So like how I went about going that process, being in the classroom and everything. Fourth is the iceberg of leadership too. So like I create, try to create an iceberg of like how things are on the surface and how things look on the bottom. There we go. So first, a day in my life feeds summer 2023. So I also understand that we work in a very institutionalized world where everything is like so top down and everything is like, okay, this is how we should be. This is how we're formal. And like, if we ask ourselves, do we really like it though? Like, when was the last time you were like so happy that my professor made such a good presentation that like, oh, he expressed through slides so well, you know? Uh, I think it's very robotic and it's good to be artistic while learning. So I try to be like fit summer 2023. That's how like singers go when they're making songs these days. A little funny. But uh, if you look at the flip chart in the center, I have written morning circle. So in my day, during the summer of 2023, we would start our day in our classroom by sitting in circle. So you could see all of those people holding each other's hand and sitting in circle basically. So we created this community. And one of the things that I learned over summer and was really well stated by my supervisor that as humans, and it's a fact that we, we have a habit of sitting in a circle and doing things. And that is dated back to like ancestral because we used to sit around fire when we discovered fire, eat, dance, a lot of our ceremonies globally in any religion, in any, any culture, nation, happens around the circle. So we, we would sit in the circle and in the center, we had some snacks and food, and then we had games. So these games were like more, more of like insightful that you learn about your values. And then we, we put a plant as well in the center, which represented nature, which we are really, really connected to. And then we also had art in there because that's such an important part of what we are as humans and dignifies us and joins us globally that we're all connected by art. And then I have tried to create what we would do during the day in the outer circle, outside of the people sitting together. So a, like, first of all, if we start from the top right, is that we created a community where we work together we, we would share our values, we would share our feelings, we would support each other. That was the first part. So created the community and then we would have group discussions. So this is a really important aspect of adult education that we need to understand that uh, adult education is not like teaching kids. That's what I learned over the summer. And it's more like people discussing things with each other. And like, it's more of an experience in like uh, conversational based learning. And then we would have energizers. So like if you're feeling lazy, we would get up and like, you know, do some exercising and things like that. So that was, that was really fun activities too. And then we would have always fun activities, always felt re-energized after that. And then we would have skills sharing. So whatever you see right now on the screen and whatever I have done for this presentation is like the flip charting and skills that I learned during the summer. Literally, I learned this thing over the summer and I'm applying it right now. It feels so amazing that I can do this right now. So we would have this kind of skills where you can express yourself, like uh, drawing things up while making sure that things are getting through right to people. And then knowledge and learning, for sure, we learn different theories Thank like you. feminist critical. Yeah. I'm just letting you know, you're, we don't see your slides right now. So I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you see now? 
You're good now. Is it good? Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry for that. Let me go to slide. So is it visible? Yep, you're good. All right. Well, I'm sorry, everybody. So uh, without interrupting the flow, I, I'll continue. So whatever I learned was this uh, different skills that I went through this summer. And that's one part of it. And I was coming back to, if you go like left, bottom, knowledge and learnings. So we would definitely learn different theories, like theories of feminist critical pedagogies, how uh, markets work globally. That was one part as well. And we also learned like the ABCD classic method that Cody Institute is really inbound and works with. So that's one part. And then we also did plays. So this, I found this really helpful that uh, we would not do anything like let's, uh, let's do a debrief of the week. Like people were asked to make a literally like a play out of whatever happened during the week. And we would remember things like so easily by like acting like that. And that was amazing. And in outermost circle, I have like put everything that, that was my particular role during this method. So I was a logistics guy. If you could ask me anything, I'll, I'll get you pens, like stationaries, or like if you need technical support, I would connect you with the right people. So that was my role. And then communication, I had to be in touch with the Cody team, like the broader team that supported the diploma regularly, which was amazing as well. And then marketing people, like I had to like make sure that we were following the consent methods where we were taking pictures for our marketing purposes and personal support. So sometimes what happened was that somebody could not make to the classes or like had some personal things. So I had to make sure that like I was making sure that they were heard and passing on the message to facilitators and they were sure that like life was good. Love. So this is what I learned in the feminist critical pedagogy is that you can tool it. So what we have learned throughout our life is that like love is such an emotion, but if you tool it, which I'll take you further in the journey, it's an amazing tool. Like you, you have to constantly love each other and share, like understand the perspective, like the broader perspective. So that was amazing. And the digital and Moodle support. So I would upload things digitally, make sure that people get the emails and everything. So that was one part of it too. And that was my day in my life. It was summer 2023. And I'm sorry for the interruptions, like when you couldn't see my screen. I really apologize for that. And the second, so thinking and rethinking leadership. This is a really important one because this was kind of like the phase where I had to think about like how things work and like what is leadership and how, how did I went about rethinking and why I had to rethink about it. So whenever I was thinking about this, I started by who comes to my mind or your mind when you think first about leadership? Like my initial thoughts were that, okay, this could be politicians. There are leaders naturally. It's, it's a term used very naturally when we talk about politicians, the leader of this party, leader of that party or the leader of this country. So that was for one thing. Other thing was uh, Fortune 500 leaders. Like these guys, they work for the big companies uh, who make things for the world. And, you know, that was the thing. And other things that came up to my mind were also philosophical leaders like Mahatma Gandhi. And now I just want to make sure that we are not falling in the binaries of, okay, this is a leader and this is a not. It's a vast majority of the variety. But as like society, we are bound to think that politicians, Fortune 500 leaders, political leaders, and some activists are considered leaders. So that's our binary of the world, but they come in different aspects, which I'll take you through as well. And what do they do? So I was like, okay, yeah, what do they do now? So they uh, run their countries. Basically they have an active army that they can utilize. And then they also have a lot of money when we talk about Fortune 500 leaders, right? Like they own, like the CEOs own so much money. So that's, they make money, big money. Uh, and how does it impact the society? So having an army, making a lot of money and exploiting the resources of the world, like uh, minerals, metals, exploitation of cheap labor and 
like exploitation of all sorts of things that you could think about that brings inequalities to the world. That's what they do when you actually think about, okay, this is the surface level thing. And now when we go deeper of what they do and how it impacts society, that's what I thought about leadership. And at the same time, so what do we do about the protest organization? So like, I will give you a good example of it. Like, have you ever thought of Greta Thunberg as a leader? We always connect her or like, or like consider her an activist. I think according to me, after thinking what she does, I think she's a leader. And what about the NGOs? So basically NGOs act, get active when there's like a climate emergency or there's a war break, broken out and then, you know, NGOs go there and help people like get food, shelter, and like uh, help displace people basically. So that's NGOs. So NGOs are also leaders. But what about community organization, local unions? So these people make sure that uh, their community is doing well and they're lifting each other in communities. So these people are also leaders. So it's, it's really important that we think like everybody as a leader and they come from all sorts of like background and not just like those top-down models of the world where we think politicians or these people are leaders. So that's one part. So that's how I started thinking. And I went about rethinking that, okay, yeah, this is how things work out. One second. Just give me one second, my screen's pause here. Can you all see the screen for now? We can, yes. Okay, thank you. So that's our next part. So I tried to create this thing called Road to Rethinking Leadership. And I think this is amazing. And I, I fell in love with this poster when I was making this. So primarily, uh, whatever I explain, I tried to express it here. And so here you could see like these two people uh, in the fence left corner near the road. They have a lot of money, but they're just two people. And the, and the one person says, I'm a man. Because like majority of the people or what we call humans that own majority of the wealth, they happen to be mad. So very few people, very few men from global north own a lot of money and they exploit the world at the same time. You could see a factory next to them that is fuming gases. And on the right, you would see small people and they have like multiple money bags and very small money bags. It's your dollar sign in them. And there is a little field on the bottom that they make our food. So it's, it's really important to think like, could you live without that new iPhone or that new electric car? I mean, it's not, I'm not saying that these things are not important, but like how much worse it does like carry if you are hungry and if you're exploiting the people that make your food. So that was one part of it. And then you come, come across the road from left corner, you would see a green signal. And once you pass that signal, I have put two of the biggest learnings of my summer. And like on the bottom, you would see uh, asset-based community citizens, community or citizen-led development, which is essentially the Cody idea of development started by uh, Reverend Dr. Moses Cody, that things got to become from citizens and communities for development and it should be asset based. So this model literally looks at like, what does the community have? Like what's the strength of the community? Like what can community do and have agency about things? So communities can work together and they do work together to get justice, sustainability, gender equality, ownership and community led development. So if we think about this thing, like this is not what is being proposed on the big global level, like when we talk about like the straightforward development of like capitalist society, where a lot of emphasis is on how much money or how much GDP is somebody making or a country making. These are the actual things that communities value. Like this is what we should be thriving as humanity. So 
ABCD approach of uh, Coding Institute really helped me understand that. And then there is feminist leadership approach. So I was introduced to this idea for the first time uh, during the internship. And it was, it was a big part of the program as well for the diploma and development the leadership ABCD and feminist leadership approach was very primary and integral. Uh, and the idea of love and working with everybody and loving each other was very important. And it took a lot of like queries out of our mind that like, are we like invisibilizing people? Like, what are we listening and what are we not listening? And are our ideas coming from like a bias? And like, it just, if like following that approach was so important, I highly recommend it if you can go and read some material about famous leadership approaches. It's just amazing. Uh, and then it just made me wonder like profit at but what cost? Like, are we actually humans when we only think about profits? It's, is it like making any sense? We are exploiting majority of the global population. And finally, well, while the world is beyond better, this uh, world is way better beyond the stop signal. So the stop signal that I drew there, if you come beyond that and beyond the world that is exploitative and exploit, exploiting people, it's really amazing. And here, this is the iceberg. And I, I tried to create this iceberg, like how leadership looks when like I rethought it. So it says rethought leadership. And this is a continuous process. And as my diploma program was going with uh, interns and all the facilitators like I kept on learning new things and this is where I am in my journey right now so service over profits so I think it's really important for us to finally understand that like service is so important and pandemic was one of the things that came up during the uh, diploma that was given an example that like really like who cared about profits when lives were at stake everything was about serving key serving each other to just get through the pandemic. So that was first part. Feminist leadership, again, doing things with, doing things with love and caring about each other is like really important. And ABCD approach, so asset-based community or citizen-led development, decolonization of mindset and institutions. So understanding the fact that a lot of things can come from a bias of colonial colonialism that we had an unfortunate event where we, a lot of countries were colonized. Well, my country was colonized. A lot of ideas that I have, I acknowledge that come from colonialism. And I continuously work to decolonize myself as an individual. And we should do our institutions too. Kodi Institute, Kodi Institute is a really good example. So the, like this one is really important. The next one, the diversification of dissemination strategies. So it is really important to understand that like we really think about like how we go about like dissemination, disse disseminating knowledge and like what we have. Because currently the method is like so top down that like we have this idea of like one expert and everybody sitting and listening to them. And there's no like boundary to that and that keeps happening. So it's really important that we uh like understand and apply an approach that includes everybody in the learning, especially when we are working with adults. And finally, the sustainable approaches. So it is also really important to understand that we are both institutionally and environmentally sustainable and using the approaches that will help us in short term as well as long term. So that was my idea of, and what we called during the internship iceberg, where things would look like this. And on the outer layer, but inside there is a lot going on. Bonus, we didn't expect this. Hey. So I didn't put this one in the agenda and objectives. Uh, so this is a bonus. So when I came in the internship, my goal was to learn more about adult education. You could see on the left, most left me very determined to learn what I have to learn. So I, I learned adult education, but then in the center, you could see me with biceps, the funny. So I learned adult education for sure. It's check mark. But before I move on to my next chapter of life, I also learned values of life. And 
like my values like started changing so i am i'm really grateful for everybody that i worked with all the interns and facilitators and those two little biceps are for the values and life education which i got as got in a bonus i thank you so much and i'm sorry for initially not being able to display my flip charts but here we are thank you So much, Drew. That was an amazing presentation. Welcome. And the next presenter we have is Preet Banga. She um, graduated from St. Avex with a first class honors degree in Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. This summer, she is the Storying Climate Change intern with the Cody Institute and Clean Foundation. Preet is from New De Delhi and likes to be outdoors in her free time. Uh, the title of her presentation is Identifying Community-Led Approaches to Climate Change. So, uh, Preet, if you can take it away. Hello, everyone. Um, just End of our um, And your work is really, truly incredible, and thank you so much for your um, fair input. Uh, we will now move into our Q&A session. We will have about 20, 30 minutes for this part of, the, of our panel. However, due to kind, time constraints, we might not be able to answer all the questions that pop up. But uh, please use the Q&A function to submit questions, and I'll ask them in order as they, that they are received. So this is a question for both of our panelists. Uh, could you tell us what's next for you, and if there are any specific learnings from your summer that you will that you feel you will be bring directly into the work you're able to start post graduation? Okay, can I go first? In the, like we'll follow the order. That's the question. So, sure. no, thank you so much for the question, Marian. Like, and what's next for me? So I. I'm, I'm going to be working for the IWK Health for the Child Safety Link Department as a junior health promotion specialist. And I'm going to take a lot of things from like my internship there. So one of the first things that like this webinar, so as a health promotion specialist, we have to do a lot of webinars and host a lot of events. So this is going to be the biggest learning, like hosting a webinar and being a part of it. And other things that I'll take is adult education, of course, because like we work with a lot of adults and teaching them how healthcare works and how to deal with pediatric situations because they have kids and they have to take care of them. So that's one thing. And I also take a lot of like personal values, I think, that like what should we value and what should we not. Thank you for the question. Thank you again for the question as well. Um, my next steps is for me is to start my master's. Um, and I plan on starting my master's in clinical psychology because psychology is my undergraduate degree, but I want to um, keep researching more on this topic of climate change and narration and communication around climate change because at this point, this topic is something that I'm very passionate about and would like to continue research on this. Um, and so that's, those kind of are what my next steps look like. And as for my learnings from my summer internship, I think I learned really good research skills and especially qualitative research skills because I've never done interviewing in the past. Um, and interviewing is just a whole artistic process too, reaching out to people, arranging interviews. And I kind of looked at interviews more as like conversations, um, because my semi-structured style of interviewing kind of felt like talking to people, which kind of reduced the anxiety on both of our levels. Um, but I learned a lot about just con conversations and like con conversing with people and uh, as well framing questions when it comes to um, forming like research questions and what I really want to dive into through my research. And I'm glad that it was a success, but 
I think I learned really good qualitative research skills, communication skills, and yeah, that's that's all. Thank you. Wonderfully stated, thank you. Um, I have a question here for Drew. Uh, what inspired you to take on adult learning? I think that's one avenue. So thank you so much for the question. I think this is very important. And I think this is very important for all of us young people. I mean, I think everybody should be young at heart, but people who just graduated or are in their early 30s or like, in university to understand the fact that uh, once we are done our education, like we have to, or like we need to give our inputs in institutions which are heavily filled or like dominated by adults. So it's very important to understand A, to work with people, B, uh, it was very specific to my degree that like in order to work with a lot of children's parents, and a lot of like uh, adults, when it comes to health promotion, we, we have to work and at, attend sessions and teach people how to have hands on things and like uh, also get their feedback so that we, we can improve our healthcare system. So I think that was my primary motivation to learn, but highly recommend it. Thank you for the question. Thank you so much, Truth. I also have a question here for Preet. Um, which story inspired your journey with climate change? Could you repeat that question? Of course. Um, which story inspired, inspired your journey with climate change? From my interviews or before I took this project on? So from my interviews, that's a very tough question. Um, I would say, all of my participants inspired me so much and they were all, the, the thing I loved about this research was most of my participants were in very different backgrounds and settings. So I got to learn about a lot about how different countries are addressing climate change and how different organizations are addressing climate change. Um, I think my one of my favorite ones was the one um, that I had some quotes on in my presentation with CCDB in Bangladesh, their irrigation and the farming story kind of really inspired me um, because it talked about, again, um, going off of the strengths in the community and building capacity and tr training people at the local levels to address their own solutions instead of having an outside organization come in and implement their solutions and top-down ideas as as Drew was talking about in his presentation. Um, so that was a really interesting story. But also from my climate course visit to um, Halifax Regional Municipality and learning about Hope Blooms and the Ecology Action Center and the wonderful work that's been taking place in Halifax that I wasn't aware about before I started my internship. Um, it was really exciting to see that there is um, this great work happening in around me and that youth are engaged and youth are involved in taking actions because we will, we do have the responsibility of addressing climate change in the coming years. So that was, that was wonderful, but it's, sorry, I can't pick one. It's really hard. Understandable. When you have so much material, you can't just choose one. Uh, thank you so much, Preet. Um, so if there's no other questions, that will bring a conclusion or draw a conclusion to our, um, to our panel today. Um, so uh, on the community led development specifically. So thank you all for joining us. And another big thank you to the amazing panelists. And you each have so much knowledge to share. And I think I can speak for all of us when we're saying we've learned a lot. Um, for our audience, if you have enjoyed this panel, we have plenty more. Oh, actually, we don't have any plenty more panels. This is the end of it. This is the conclusion of our, um, of our symposium. Um, so thank you all for joining us and have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Harris. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Preet. Thanks, everyone.